Quebec nationalism or Québécois nationalism asserts that the Québécois people are a nation, distinct from the rest of Canada, and promotes the unity of the Québécois people in the province of Quebec. Quebec nationalism was first known as French-Canadian nationalism. It was not until the age of the Quiet Revolution, that the term Quebec nationalism, and Québécois people, replaced the long-standing previously used term, French-Canadian. French Canadians' roots are derived from the people who were born in Canada with parents of French descent. The term later changed in the 1960s to become currently Quebec nationalism. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Canadian liberal nationalism. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> New France. The settlement of New France was made up of seven regions that spanned from the Maritimes to the Rockies and from the Hudson Bay to the Gulf of Mexico. Although this landscape was vast, Canada was at its core. The colonists of New France after the 17th century learned how to adapt to their new land that was accompanied by the native peoples, cold climate and new transportation methods. The greatest adjustment the colonists made however was the shift from their homeland roots to developing a true and pure Canadian identity. This new identity could be seen in the adoption of accents, creation of new legends and stories, emerging societal traits and transformation of language. A main factor when identifying a new and developing identity is the evolution of language. This appeared in the New France colonists though the disappearance of their native tongues and the creation of a new language to become their own. The newly developed language was the standardized and fixed form of communication throughout the educated classes of New France. It was composed of various regional dialects of French creating what became the French-Canadian language. The new language was simple and direct French, it even boasted praises from French visitors on its purity and quality. The early stabilization of the new language was a key component attributing to the distinctiveness of the French-Canadian culture. Along with the development of a new language came the development of a new social hierarchy as well. French Canadians supported the idea of a modified social hierarchy based upon the old French regime. However, they did not alter the core values its foundation was based upon. This created a clearly constructed social order for Canada. Between the development of a language to call their own, a new social order and thriving colonies, the immigrants were no longer immigrants but rather people who embodied not only a Canadian identity but also a provincial identity as well. During this time, the identity of Canada was split between 95% of the colonists being Francophones and the other 5% being Anglophones. However, this would prove to be problematic. The Francophones were Catholic and poor whilst the Anglophones were Protestant and wealthy. This imbalance of socioeconomic status and all the repercussions that came along with it sparked a feud between the Francophones and Anglophones that still remains. Topic 1534 to 1774. Canada was first a French colony. Jacques Cartier claimed it for France in 1534, and permanent French settlement began in 1608. It was part of New France, which constituted all French colonies in North America. Up until 1760, Canadian nationalism had developed itself free of all external influences. However, during the Seven Years' War, the British Army invaded the French colony as part of its North American strategy, winning a conclusive victory at the Battle of the Plains of Abraham. At the Treaty of Paris 1763, France agreed to abandon its claims in Canada in return for permanent French control of Guadeloupe. From the 1760s onward, Canadian nationalism developed within a British constitutional context. Despite intense pressure from outside Parliament, the British government drafted the Quebec Act which guaranteed Canadians the restoration of French civil law, guaranteed the free practice of the Catholic faith, and returned the territorial extensions that they had enjoyed before the Treaty of Paris. In effect, this enlightened Action by leaders in the British Parliament allowed French Canada to retain its unique characteristics. Although detrimental to Britain's relationship with the Thirteen Colonies, this has, in its contemporary assessment, been viewed as an act of appeasement and was largely effective at dissolving Canadian nationalism in the 18th century especially considering the threat and proximity of American revolutionary ideology yet it became less effective with the arrival of loyalists after the revolutions. 
With the Loyalists splitting the province of Quebec into two identities, Upper Canada and Lower Canada, Canadians were now labelled by the Loyalists as French Canadians. Topic: 1800s to 1880s. From 1776 to the late 1830s, the world witnessed the creation of many new national states with the birth of the United States, the French Republic, Haiti, Paraguay, Argentina, Chile, Mexico, Brazil, Peru, Gran Colombia, Belgium, Greece and others. Often accomplished militarily, these national independence movements occurred in the context of complex ideological and political struggles pitting European metropoles against their respective colonies, often assuming the dichotomy of monarchists against republicans. These battles succeeded in creating independent republican states in some regions of the world, but they failed in other places, such as Ireland, Upper Canada, Lower Canada, and Germany. There is no consensus on the exact time of the birth of a national consciousness in French Canada. Some historians defend the thesis that it existed before the 19th century, because the Canadians saw themselves as a people culturally distinct from the French even in the time of New France. The cultural tensions were indeed palpable between the governor of New France, the Canadian-born Pierre de Vaudreuil and the general Louis-Joseph de Montcalm, a Frenchman, during the French and Indian War. However, the use of the expression La Nation Canadienne the Canadian nation by French Canadians is a reality of the 19th century. The idea of a nation Canadienne was supported by the liberal or professional class in Lower Canada, lawyers, notaries, librarians, accountants, doctors, journalists, and architects, among others. A political movement for the independence of the Canadian people slowly took form following the enactment of the Constitutional Act of 1791. The Act of the British Parliament created two colonies, Lower Canada and Upper Canada, each of which had its own political institutions. In Lower Canada, the French-speaking and Catholic Canadians held the majority in the elected House of Representatives, but were either a small minority or simply not represented in the appointed legislative and executive councils, both appointed by the governor, representing the British Crown in the colony. Most of the members of the Legislative Council and the Executive Council were part of the British ruling class, composed of wealthy merchants, judges, military men, etc., supportive of the Tory party. From early 1800 to 1837, the government and the elected assembly were at odds on virtually every issue. Under the leadership of Speaker Louis Joseph Papineau, the Parti Canadien renamed Parti Patriot in 1826 initiated a movement of reform of the political institutions of Lower Canada. The party's constitutional policy, summed up in the 92 resolutions of 1834, called for the election of the Legislative and Executive Councils. The movement of reform gathered the support of the majority of the representatives of the people among Francophones but also among liberal Anglophones. A number of the prominent characters in the reformist movement were of British origin, for example John Nielsen, Wolfred Nelson, Robert Nelson and Thomas Starro Brown or of Irish extraction, Edmund Bailey O'Callaghan, Daniel Tracy and Jacqueline Waller. Two currents existed within the reformists of the Parti Canadienne, a moderate wing, whose members were fond of British institutions and wished for Lower Canada to have a government more accountable to the elective houses representative and a more radical wing whose attachment to British institutions was rather conditional to this proving to be as good as to those of the neighbouring American republics. The formal rejection of all 92 resolutions by the Parliament of Great Britain in 1837 led to a radicalisation of the patriotic movement's actions. Louis Joseph Papineau took the leadership of a new strategy which included the boycott of all British imports. During the summer, many popular gatherings assemblées populaires were organised to protest against the policy of Great Britain in Lower Canada. In November, Governor Archibald Acheson ordered the arrest of 26 leaders of the Patriot movement, among whom Louis Joseph Papineau and many other reformists were members of Parliament. This instigated an armed conflict which developed into the Lower Canada Rebellion. Following the repression of the insurrectionist movement of 1838, many of the most revolutionary nationalist and democratic ideas of the party patriot were discredited. <laughs> Ultramontane nationalism <laughs> 1840s to 1950s 
Although it was still defended and promoted up until the beginning of the 20th century, the French Canadian liberal nationalism born out of the American and French revolutions began to decline in the 1840s, gradually being replaced by both a more moderate liberal nationalism and the ultramontanism of the powerful Catholic clergy as epitomized by Lionel Gruel. In the 1920s to 1950s, this form of traditionalist Catholic nationalism became known as clerico nationalism. In opposition with the other nationalists, Ultramontanes rejected the idea that the people are sovereign and that church and state should be absolutely separated. They accepted the authority of the British Crown in Canada, defended its legitimacy, and preached obedience to the British ruler. For Ultramontanes, the faith of Franco-Canadians was to survive by defending their Roman Catholic religion and the French language. Topic. 1950s In the time leading up to the radical changes of the Quiet Revolution the people of Quebec placed more importance on traditional values in life which included going back to their nationalistic roots. Nationalism at this time meant restoring the old regime and going back to the concept of a French-Canadian nation built upon Catholicism as it was in the past. The church and state were intertwined and the church greatly dictated legislature falling under the matters of the state. Nationalism also represented conservation, and in that, not being influenced by the outside world but rather staying within their own borders without room for exploration. Quebec was very closed-minded wanting to keep their people and province untouched by the more progressive ideas from the rest of the world. Even in terms of careers, the church governed the state in this aspect and people were working conventional jobs such as in the agricultural industry. Quebec did not align with the fast-paced urban life of Western society that was reflected across the nation and other countries. The lack of great progression is believed to be attributed to the premier of the province at this time Maurice Duplessis. Maurice Duplessis returned to win the 1944 election and stayed in the position of premier of Quebec for 15 years whilst being the leader of the conservative Union Nationale Party. The Union Nationale Party valued and upheld the traditional definition of nationalism. This meant the province would upkeep its long-established ways of operating with changes being made only within the scope of the conventional values. Because of this, the Union Nationale Party was favored by those who wanted to stick to the accustomed lifestyle and disliked by those who wanted a progressive province being brought into the North American culture. Duplessis's main ideas to transform Quebec were through rapid industrialization, urbanization, and a greater and faster development of the province's natural resources. English speakers of the province hoped that industrialization and urbanization would replace the outdated French Canadian society. These changes launched French Canadians into the urban and industrial way of life. There were new opportunities created to provide economic and social stability but by doing so, decreased the importance and significance placed upon cultural and linguistic survival. However, the deaths of Maurice Duplessis in September 1959 and his successor Paul Sauve in January 1960 set in motion the final end to the old traditional definition of Quebec nationalism in the 1950s. A new leader, Quebec and ideology of nationalism would emerge and sweep across the province finally providing French Canadians their greatly awaited need for change. 1960s The events leading up to the 1960s were catalysts that would tear down and reconstruct the foundation of what it meant to be a Quebec nationalist. Nationalism in the 1960s represented a completely new mantra unlike the aged significance placed upon it in the 1950s. The 1960s in Quebec was a period of the Quiet Revolution, the Liberal Party of Canada the election of the Parti Québécois, a site of a thriving economy and the beginning of a variety of independent movements. During this time, Quebec was a place of enlightenment, there were changes in the society, values, and economy. This was a time of radical thinking, culture and ideologies, one ideology would finally emerge after centuries of dormancy. Quebec would change from its old-fashioned roots and be brought into the progressive mainstream century. A main difference was the secularization of the Catholic Church, practiced by most French Canadians from the province itself. Unlike in the 1950s under Duplessis, the church and state were now separate entities removing the strict control the old-fashioned ways of the church had over institutions. 
The shift gained the province its own independence. These ideologies took off after the victory of Jean Lesage's Liberal Party in the 1960 provincial election. The election of Jean Lesage and his Liberal Party finally ended the long standing ancient regime the people of Quebec had been living under. It began the reinstitution of the outdated socio economic and political structures to fully modernize them once and for all. This movement would be known as the Quiet Revolution. The Quiet Revolution signified something different for Quebecers but a common denominator was that both English and French speakers were happy with the end to Maurice Duplessis's conservative party the Union Nationale that brought much social and political repression. The Quiet Revolution beginning in the 1960s gathered momentum with the many reformations carried out by Jean Lesage including changes to the education, social welfare, hospitalization, hydroelectricity, regional development and greater francophone participation in the industrial sector. Quebec nationalism for the francophones was on the rise at this time not only within the province but on a global scale as well. Quebec nationalism in the 1960s stemmed from the ideology of decolonization this new type of nationalism was based off ideas happening on a global scale. Because of the new openness of the province, travelers and people of the church were encouraged to go and learn the ways of life in other parts of the world and then return to share, compare and incorporate the ideologies into their lifestyle. The oppression of francophones was also something that Lesage wanted to bring to light and change because of the long-standing cultural, and society tension between the francophones and anglophones. Lesage had the desire to change the role that the state had over the province, he no longer wanted economic inferiority of French Canadians and the francophone society but rather evolving organized labor, educational reform and the modernization of political process. There were many issues that the province had during this time due to the imbalance between the francophones and anglophones on a variety of levels. Even though the francophones outnumbered the anglophones, the francophones were still seen as a minority. This oppression however dated further back than just the 1960s. The province has a history of colonization and conquest that is complex and multi-layered. The past history of this province can be seen in the city's landscape marked with a variety of memoir commemorating the overtaking powers. The province's francophones as well as ethnic and racial minority groups did not have any power, they were living in the poorest parts of cities. It was hard for these groups to progress in their careers or climb the socio-economic ladder. For francophones it was difficult because success was geared towards the English speaker and prestigious institutions were English speaking and devalued the culture and language of the French. By the early 1960s a small but mighty group of French Canadians from all classes were receiving proper education but only to go into careers in Anglophone dominated institutions. Avocation of the new form of nationalism was used to address the drastic conditions in the workplace as well as living conditions. This was most apparent between the Francophones who believed in the new 1960s idea of nationalism and the predominantly English anti nationalists. The goal of the new society was to overcome injustices for minority groups in everyday life. This sparked a number of movements such as the Black Power Movement and Women's Rights Movement that were mainly seen in working class neighborhoods which gained publicity when journals, conferences and advocates fed into these movements. A movement of a new Quebec with a new meaning behind the word nationalism would continue to change and progress over time with the 1960s being the start of this change. Contemporary Quebec nationalism Understanding contemporary Quebec nationalism is difficult considering the ongoing debates on the political status of the province and its complex public opinion. No political option outright independence, sovereignty association, constitutional reforms, or signing on to the present Canadian constitution has achieved decisive majority support and contradictions remain within the Quebec polity. One debated subject that has often made the news is whether contemporary Quebec nationalism is still «ethnic» or if it is «linguistic» or «territorial». The notion of «territorial nationalism» promoted by all Quebec premiers since Jean Lesage gathers the support of the majority of the sovereigntists and essentially all Quebec federalist nationalists. 
Debates on the nature of Quebec's nationalism are currently going on and various intellectuals from Quebec or other parts of Canada have published works on the subject, notably Will Kimlicka, professor of philosophy at Queen's University and Charles Blattberg and Michel Seymour, both professors at the Université de Montréal. People who feel that Quebec nationalism is still ethnic have often expressed their opinion that the sentiments of Quebec's nationalists are insular and parochial and concerned with preserving a pure lane population of white francophones within the province. These accusations have always been vigorously denounced by Quebec nationalists of all sides, and such sentiments are generally considered as unrepresentative of the intellectual and mainstream political movements in favor of a wider independence for Quebec, seeing the movement as a multi ethnic cause. However, then-Premier of Quebec Jacques Parizeau, commenting on the failure of the 1995 Quebec referendum said, "...it is true, it is true that we were beaten, but in the end, by what? By money and ethnic votes, essentially. C'est vrai, c'est vrai qu'on a été battus, au fond, par quoi? Par l'argent puis des votes ethniques, essentiellement." People who feel that Quebec nationalism is linguistic have often expressed their opinion that Quebec nationalism includes a multi-ethnic or multicultural French-speaking majority either as mother tongue or first language used in public. There is little doubt that the post-1950s era witnessed an awakening of Quebecers' self-identity. The rural, conservative and Catholic Quebec of the 19th and early 20th centuries has given way to a confident, cosmopolitan society that has many attributes other than valuing multiculturalism of a modern, internationally recognized community with a unique culture worth preserving. The cultural character of Quebec nationalism has been affected by changes in the cultural identity of the province, nation more generally. Since the 1960s, these changes have included the secularism and other traits associated with the Quiet Revolution. Recognition of the nation by Ottawa On October 21, 2006, during the General Special Council of the Quebec Wing of the Liberal Party of Canada initiated a national debate by adopting with more than 80% support a resolution calling on the Government of Canada to recognize the Quebec nation within Canada. A month later, the said resolution was taken to Parliament first by the Bloc Québécois, then by the Prime Minister of Canada, Stephen Harper. On November 27, 2006, the House of Commons of Canada passed a motion recognizing that the Québécois form a nation within a united Canada. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Present-day nationalism. Quebec nationalism today and what it means to Quebecers differs based on the individual. Nationalism today is more open than what it has been in the past in a some ways. A common theme that can be seen is the attachment Québécois have towards their province and the country of Canada. They are still very provincial and many identify as a Quebecer first and a Canadian second. <laughs> <laughs> Nationalist groups Topic. Political parties and groupings Union Nationale 1936-1981 Parti Québécois 1968-present Quebec Solidaire 2006-present Parti Indépendantiste 2007-2014 Option Nationale 2012-2018, later fused with Quebec Solidaire Bloc Québécois 1991 present Quebec Debout 2018 Coalition Avenir Quebec 2012 present The party's ideology is mostly nationalist but also promote Quebec autonomism and some Canadian federalism We Quebec Topic <inaudible> 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 Civic Organizations Saint Jean Baptiste Societies Mouvement National des Québécois Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Academic and Intellectual Associations Les Intellectuels pour la Souveraineté Ipso Intellectuals for Sovereignty Centre étudiant de recherche et d'action nationale Student Research and National Action Centre 
Institut de recherche sur l'autodétermination des pupils et les indépendances nationales Research Institute on Self-Determination of Peoples and National Independence. Nationalists newspapers and publications Le Jour Le Devoir Le Québécois L'Action Nationale Extremist, nativist and ultra-nationalist groups Front de Libération du Québec Quebec Liberation Front La Mute 2015 present Adelante Fédération des Québécois de Souche Federation of Native Québécois Topic See also Canadian nationalism French nationalism History of Quebec Lists of active separatist movements Nationalism Partition of Quebec Politics of Canada Politics of Quebec Quebec Federalist Ideology Quebec Identitaire Quebec Sovereignty Movement Quebec Referendum, 1980 Quebec Referendum, 1995 Quiet Revolution Clarity Act Notes <laughs>